topic for today is the three sure ways in which you can create and help to develop employee engagement. All right, so I'm gonna be presenting. Uh, I'm gonna be asking you guys questions. Again, feel free to participate. Uh, ask questions at any time. I will have a, a more of an open question and answer session towards the back, towards the end, but uh, I wanna make it very interactive, all right? So, uh, so let's talk about this, all right? So I'm about to put on the PowerPoint, but first let me give you some preliminary ideas, okay? Um, employee engagement is probably the number one thing that is sinking us, okay? I'll show you guys in a second the, the data behind it. But if we don't tackle this and we don't understand how to tackle this and who should tackle this, and then what are the steps to getting things going, then this is always going to be a problem for us because we're never gonna be able to really develop people to their highest potential. And we as managers get very frustrated because we try hard, they're trying hard, but it's just not working. Something is not working. And then of course the HR departments, I know that some of you guys are from within uh, the, HR, the HR world. You guys get very frustrated and rightly so because you're trying to help the managers to help their people and you, and, you, and you just can't seem to, to rally the forces or knowing how to do this. So there's many steps to this. However, we, we oftentimes we make it too complicated. All right. We over, we, we, we go tend to go to extremes. We either overcomplicate it or oversimplify it where we just make this ton of, we got to do this, then do this and this, and then the other extreme, we just kind of give platitudes or, uh, you know, Oh, well, you just got to do this. Yeah, but I've tried that, okay, and that's not working. So, um, so what I'm gonna try to do is give you guys some initial steps for you to guys go and practice, all right, and then come back and let's, let's go to the next step, all right? Bring me some of your work, I'll be, I'll be glad to help you, and, so, and put you in a series, because I have a series of webinars, so you can say first this, then this, then this, then this, all right, and if we do these steps, you'll see the difference, all right? Uh, but this is not a Coke machine. You don't just take a quarter in, press a button, and oh, those are people are going to change. Remember, you're going to face pushback. Uh, but there are some things, there's some guidelines, some rules, some laws of nature that if you just simply do, they tend to work, all right? Um, so just keep in mind that it's a little bit at a time. And if you take the things we're going to cover today and you put up to practice, all right, uh, they should help out. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and, and, and dive right into um, the... Uh, 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 the the data okay all right so uh so let me pull up my uh, okay so here you guys what you guys should be seeing is the uh uh is um is this screen uh how to do it three ways to ensure employee engagement okay and oh, I think I just hit the wrong button. Sorry. Hey, I apologize. I apologize. Is everybody still there? Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. And let me start that back up again. All right. So um, I got you guys back on the screen. Let me share the screen here. And here we go. All right. So the three sure ways to ensure employee engagement. All right. Um, so first of all, let's talk about what we're up against. Okay, what we're up against is this trend right here, all right? And this is from the Gallup poll. I put the, uh, I put the, 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 uh, the link down here at the bottom so that you would see the, the source of it. And the, the workplace standard is Gallup. Gallup has been tracking this for many years, okay? As you can notice on the screen, over 19 years, but they can go back into the early 90s. And, and what I want you to look at is the shocking reality of this right here, okay? All right, that's 35%, okay? And so what this means, the green line is the percentage that are engaged, okay? That's the only 35%. So the Gallup has been tracking, they used to track this on a daily basis. In 2017, they decided, no, we're not gonna do that, do that anymore. We're gonna track it on a weekly basis. And so if you go to their website and you look at this, look at this article, you'll, you can even go every week and look at it. And you'll notice that for the past 19 years, it has never gotten any higher than 35%. Okay. And this is across all industries in America, across all employees. Don't think, oh, my frontliners are disengaged. This study shows that it's executives, it's directors, it's managers, it's middle managers and supervisors, it's frontliners. It's your vendors. It doesn't matter the profession, whether they're doctors, nurses, pilots, engineers, plumbers, across the board. We are suffering 
from a workplace environment that is only 35% engaged on any given day in any given company on any, in any given industry. The shocking reality is you guys probably are feeling it. You're probably sitting there going, well, no wonder. Okay. Uh, so um, what, uh, what I want you to notice is that I'm sorry, I, unfortunately, it actively disengaged. Okay. Uh, this is just as bad. Okay. Uh, you know, actively disengaged. I mean, you here you have 20% that are actively disengaged. Okay, 17. So these numbers just don't fare very well. Okay. Um, and so, uh, so I want to ask you guys, if you guys at this point have any questions uh, uh, and, and see if you guys, if, if you guys um, have any questions at this point, at, ask them during in your in, in the chat in, in the chat and I can answer any questions as we go. Okay. Um, uh, Sorry about that, guys. I'm getting used to these. Uh, okay. So we covered what we're up against. And what I want you to look at is that the 13%, the 35%, notice at the top, the percentage of workers who are actively disengaged, those who have miserable work experiences and spread through their unhappiness to their colleagues, tied its lowest level, 13%, consistent with the 2018 findings, okay? So uh, here, by the way, I'm going to send you this PowerPoint and you guys can see this for yourself and read this data of what it means to not be engaged. OK, so this is what we're up against. And here I showed you this. This article came out in the Baton Rouge Business Report in 2014, showing that the trends back in 2000 were no better. Interestingly enough, you see this 37 percent. That's Louisiana. So we're actually on the higher end. If you break it by state. Louisiana is one of the highest states. I don't understand how this works, okay? Uh, but the reality is that every study shows that Louisiana, uh, Connecticut, uh, and some other similar states are up on the higher enchilon of engagement, but 70% still remain disengaged. And look on the right-hand side, here's the profession. So this is a huge problem. I'm not gonna, ha I'm not gonna read through all this. You guys can take a look at the, uh, at the data, but this is what we're up against. If we don't have a way to deal with it, then, then we're going to be up a creek without a paddle, okay? And everything's going to be frustrating, okay? So we, uh, we have to be the ones that are up for the challenge. So that mo what most of us do is, of course, if you're, if you're in this webinar, is because you've taken this attitude. Here I come to save the day. For those of you that remember Mighty Miles or you heard about Mighty Miles, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice little jingle. Here you come to save the day. That's what you are trying to do. So congratulations, okay? Um, so then we throw things at it to make sure that we can engage folks. And what we tend to do as companies, we tend to do the following. We tend to um, uh, say, all right, if we, if we simply increase our benefits, then things will become better. So we try those things and that adds a little bit. It lasts a while, a short time, but then again, then you do a morale survey and sure enough, you have the same issues or the same problems, or you can't seem to make much improvement or at least not make it long lasting. And then when you're coaching or you're trying to do with people's attitudes, that this is the one thing that comes out a lot. He says, well, I mean, the company's trying to take care of you. Okay, look at, look at all that we do for you. Uh, I spent some time with some with some clients that, that needed this help, and they and I and I know I watched them for about a month and a half, work through a very tedious report because they wanted to show all their employees, okay, all that the company was doing for their benefits packages, their compensation package, and what was driving that was their attempt to curtail negativity in the office. So they put together this very nice three to four page document and they went and they tailored it by employee. It was pretty fascinating. It cost them an enormous amount of money. It cost them a lot of money. And they sat down with each one of the team members, each one of the employees, their supervisors, and said, look all that the company's doing. You're getting paid $65,000, but this is what your insurance is. This is what your compensation really is. Here's what your package is. And they wanted to show that we're paying an enormous amount of money that you guys don't see. And so we're providing you benefits. And so we try to make benefits the reason that we can get them engaged, but we know that that's short-lived. So then we throw money at it, 
Okay, we can increase your pay, and when and we promise them, and, and that look, I, I can't I can't pay you now what you want, but look in four months and five months, and we try to give a three percent, a two percent, a four percent. Sometimes we will even do salary adjustments where you actually give somebody a salary adjustment of about nine percent because you you're backtracking. Uh, something that you should have been paying them already, and you throw money at the problem, okay? Uh, but the statistics show us, I'll show you in just a second, this is not the problem. Most people are not, most people are not disengaged because of pay. Now, they'll tell you that when they're quitting, that they found some, another job for $2 more, or they'll tell you that, yeah, it's the money, because that's the easy thing to say, okay? That is the easy thing to uh, allude to. Okay, and so when you have employees talking about their money with each other and they're throwing money around, that's a key indicator that your culture is on a downward spiral. If all they can do is talk about money and that they're negotiating on money, that's a clear sign. So, um, so throwing money at it is not the solution. It's a part, it's, all this is part of solutions, but it's not the key, the key factors. Then we throw perks at them. Then we throw fun. All right, let's have fun. Let's have activity, activities. Let's make sure we do birthday recognitions. And, and y'all, I really want to encourage y'all. I'm not saying we shouldn't do these things. As a matter of fact, if you don't have benefits, if you don't increase people's pay on a regular basis, if you don't throw, if you don't have perks, if you don't create a lot of fun activity, well, then you're hurting your culture. And yeah, people are going to get disengaged. But these are not the core factors. These are symptoms or symptomatic things that you should do, but these aren't dealing with the core issue of what drives people engagement. Okay. Then we promote people. Okay. Again, you should do that, but don't look to that as, a, as the reason for it. All right. Or we do some type of combination of each. Okay, so so what's the answer? All right, uh, so just just cut to the chase. The answer is it, it comes down to this list of twelve. You're saying the twelve things. Well, look, I promised you there were only three, but in order to understand all three, you really have to understand these twelve elements. Okay, because this is the market standard. This was done in the mid '90s. It was, it was done by the Gallup organization. Uh, the authors are Marcus Buckingham and Kurt Offman, and they look at the title. Okay, break all the rules. As a manager, if you want to engage folks, the book is saying you have to break some rules and get out of some wrong way of thinking. And what they did is they did it in end base, based on an in-depth interview by the Gallup organization of over 80,000 managers and over 400 companies. And they studied their cultures and they said, all right, those of you that are doing a really good job, what is it that you guys are doing? All right. So uh, I'm going to be recording this. You guys will have access to it. But this this is what I have been using in my personal development and developing all my teams whenever I'm working as a manager for a company, in my company, and for all of my clients, I basically teach them the, the, to, to, to adopt this book, all right? And to boil it down, let's look at the 12, okay? Communicate expectations to your team, provide them the tools they need, give the teams the opportunity to do their best. Provide recognition or praise to your teams every week. Now, see that right there is where things start really becoming a problem for most. What do you mean for most for most managers? What do you mean every week? What are you talking about? What you know? Uh, I, I I can't I can't I can't I have I have eight people. I can't sit around and talk with each one of them and recognize or praise them every week. Well, therein lies the problem. Okay, but we're going to dissect this in just a few minutes. We're, still, we're not going to cover all 12. Okay, we can't cover all 12. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to, um, what I'm going to encourage you is that you take this list and we're going to boil it down to the top three. Because if you boil it down to the top three, the other ones normally fall into place, but you have to see what all of them are. Okay, show sincere care for each team member, encourage the development of each of your team members. Okay, sincerely show that the opinion of team members really counts and are considered. Okay, we're going to come back to some of these a little, a little later in the webinar. Promote the organization's mission, vision, values. All right, ensure that every team member is committed to quality work. Promote friendly relationships at work between team members. Okay, hey, invite them to go, invite for them to go bowling and let them know that you're going to pay for it and you don't go. Now they're going to tell you, come with them. We'll go with them, but let them build relationships amongst themselves, all right? Number 11, ensure that you talk the progress of each team member on a monthly basis. And number 12, provide each member the opportunity to learn and to grow. So now, every time I've been teaching this since 19, since the book came out, around 1994, 1996, okay? 
And as I taught clients how to do this, this list of 12 was very burdensome because 12 items is very difficult. And as I kept teaching it and training it and training it, I realized, wait a minute, this can be boiled down to three categories. And around 2010, 2012, we boiled it down to three categories and things skyrocketed for our clients because it's, it's a whole lot easier to grab three concepts and then fill in the blanks with, the, with this list than to try to remember and figure out how to do a list of 12. So let's go right down to it. Here's the top three, okay? There they are in picture form. They're real simple to, 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 to visualize and let me lay them, lay them all out. Number one is if you want to engage your team members, you have to help them and their teams deal and know how to solve problems and disagreements, okay? Number two, you as uh, the supervisors need to learn how to delegate and empower the team members. And number three, supervisors need to learn how to be good mentors and build high performers in each one of their team members and not give up on any one of them easily. Okay, so notice that there's a key factor to all this. Let me repeat them again. The supervisors need to train and teach and show their people how to solve problems and how to resolve disagreements. Number two, supervisors need to learn how to delegate and empower team members. Three, supervisors need to learn how to mentor and build high performers in their team members and not give up on them, all right? So at this point, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the, uh, the, the, the PowerPoint. I'll come back to it. I want to see if you guys have any questions. Uh, and look, I, in today's session, we're going to cover and we're going to dive into number one. If you are here because you want to learn about delegating and empowering team members, I'm going to have one. I'm going to have a webinar just on that topic either later in May or in June. Okay. And likewise, in mentor uh, number three, the third one, we have a webinar. We have some videos. So if you can't wait for next week, you can't let me know, email me. I can send you some videos that we have free available to you on each one of these topics. But today we're going to dive in on problems and disagreements. I'm going to stop the screen share and I'm going to go back and see if you guys have any questions. All right. So great question. Uh, Mallory, great question. How would I define employee disengagement? Employee disengagement can be summarized in the effort in which a person uses their energy for work that is going to produce uh, progress, that is going to move things forward. So uh, see, that's a lot of, I said there, okay? Um, maybe I should put at, at a, at a, uh, at a uh, slide with the definition. Uh, so I, I'm gonna take a note to, to include that. So for example, if somebody has an eight hour day, I go to work and I stay busy, okay? And so I know that some of my work is going to go somewhere and I know that some of my work is repetitive work, or some of my work is not going to go anywhere. Um, uh, I, 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 I do this report all the time, and I I turn it in, and I turn it in the next week, and then I fill it out again, and I turn it in again. But I don't see anybody doing anything with it. Okay, uh, that's repetitive work. Okay, um, uh, or they're putting things off, delaying things. So, but but they're but they're not sitting around. Uh, playing tiddlywings or on the internet, probably some are, but most people are actually doing work, okay? But they know that their work really is not moving the change, using a football analogy. They, they know that their work is really not producing a lot of progress for whatever, but, but hey, look, I want a job, okay? And uh, two weeks ago, uh, right before the, 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 the lockdown and the stay at home, uh, lockdown, I was with some, with some uh, managers and we were talking about this and one of them was just very honest. None of the executives were around. There were about nine other managers and she basically said, well, look, I know the doctors are not going to pay attention to this. It's a very large, very large hospital. Okay. I know the doctors are not going to pay attention to this. I mean, I've been saying this for years. Okay. And somebody said, well, why don't you do something about that? And she says, well, I Hey, I know what's going to happen if I raise a stink. I just got to keep my job. I'll keep you giving them the information. Okay. That's an example of employee disengagement. They're doing work, but they're doing work that's not really engaging progress. Okay. And so they stay busy and they stay busy on purpose. Why? Because it's easy for you to find me on the internet. It's easy for you to see that I'm playing cards. It's easy that, I, that you're seeing smoking. So I got to keep myself busy. But the work that I'm doing is a disengaging type of work that doesn't move the chains. 
Mallory, does that, does that, does that answer your question? If it doesn't, please shoot me another question or raise your hand. I'll open up the mic. We can have a little conversation. Okay. So let's, let's go back to the, um, to the, to the, to the, to the presentation, okay? So uh, these are the three, let's dive into problems and indications. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is start with your outlook. How do we tackle this, okay? Start with your outlook as HR managers, and I think all of you guys are either supervisors or managers, there's some here that I see that are HR. All supervisors and managers, regardless of their level in the company, have to change their outlook on their role as managers. Here's the outlook that I would like all of you to start adopting, and it is this, okay? It is that good management is the art of making problems so interesting and their solutions so constructive that everyone wants to work and deal with them, okay? And so um, read that again, okay? Because every word really means something. Good management is an art. It's not just a, uh, oh, hum. it's an art. You gotta really enjoy doing this, okay? You like the idea of making problems interesting and their solutions constructive. In other words, you have an attitude that says, we've got to tackle this. I hate problems, but that's what problems are. We've got to go tackle this. Come on, guys. And it just, it, it becomes an us. Let's work on this together. So you got to make the problems interesting, okay? You got to make it mean something. Why does it really matter if we have this customer service level? And then you got to humanize it. You gotta say, well, because, and then you tell stories. Well, Mrs. Jones the other day, you know, and then you show a picture of Mrs. Jones and they say, yeah, this is why, this is why she brought up this issue because there's Mrs. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. and Mrs. Edwards, you know, it's in all these clients that are having this problem. You make it interesting. Okay, you humanize it. And then you say, all right, and then you dive into how to resolve problems together. How we're gonna, um, Stick around because I'm going to break this down as we go through the webinar. Okay, right now we're a little bit high level starting to dive into the details, but your mindset has to change so that everyone looks forward to it. Now, you're not going to change this attitude overnight. Okay, I've worked with teams where I've managed them and it takes several months to get folks to adopt the I'm looking forward to attitude. This, but okay, so but if you don't have that attitude and you're not the one that has this outlook. It's not going to be contagious. So um, if you go to my website, go to teamworldworld.com, go at the top where it says training videos and go look for the section that's called management excellence. There's a video there. I think it's video number oh, uh, six or seven. All right, go, uh, go on there. As a matter of fact, let me show it to you. Okay, let me, let me show it to you um, because you really ought to consider going there. Okay, um, go to my website. Uh, let's see. All right, what you do is go to teamrealworld.com, okay? And it's a very short video. It's a seven-minute video. You go to training videos and look at all the free videos that we have, okay? Let, let the, okay, look at all the free videos that we have on our website that deals with a ton of these issues, okay? So you go down here towards the bottom where it, not toward the bottom, toward the middle. Management excellence right here, that number two, having a great positive employees. Go watch that. It's seven minutes. It's a powerful a uh, short video that deals with this issue of how to create a positive outlook. So if you have a positive outlook about problems, but you're not teaching nor coaching nor mentoring your people how to have a positive outlook, then you're not gonna make this work because you're wanting them to kind of figure it out by osmosis by just watching you. No, have them watch this video that I'm showing you right here. The life is beautiful. Have them watch that with you and start a conversation about it, around it, okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, to the uh, the PowerPoint. Any questions up to this point? Put them in the chat or raise your hand, and I'll be glad to answer. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, all right, to the slide deck. That's the new word, the slide deck. All right, so you got to have this outlook. Okay, the size of the problem is 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 what also should keep you should should drive you toward action. Look at this. Here are problems. Most of the problems that the frontliners face are way down here at the bottom. Okay, and notice it says here 100% of the problems are known to the frontliners. The frontliners know what all the problems are. What they don't know about 60% is what are the solutions? About 40% they do. Okay, but the problem is that the issues is they do know what all the problems are. We're just not asking them enough. 
And when we're asking them, we're putting in traps on them. We're saying things like, tell me about the problems, but only if you come with solutions, okay? And I have a different webinar with that whole mindset and that shows you why you shouldn't do that. I can point that to you later. But your attitude needs to be the opposite where it says, I need to hear the problems and you collect the issues. Why? Because the problems down here are the ones that are discouraging them from action. 96 of the problem, 96% of the problems never get to top managers. Okay, 74% uh, of problems are known to supervisors. So you got 30, 30 to 40% that your middle managers do know what the problems are. So if you're not hearing from your team members, your frontliners, then what you should do is talk to your middle managers because they do know about 75% of the problems. And so the question is, is why aren't we fixing these? Why are we not tackling these? All right, and the opposite is true. If you reverse this pyramid, the, op the executives are having the same issue. They have a bunch of problems and issues that they want addressed and no one's finding out from them what are those issues? Because the mindset, I'm sorry to say, of a lot of managers is to run away from problems, to avoid problems. I got too much work to do. I don't have time to hear everybody's problems. I don't want to deal with the drama. I don't want to hear with the frustration. I don't want to hear with the anger. And I know I, know I keep saying this, but I do want you to know, I, there, go to that same website and go look for the video that says the nine steps to employ this engagement on how to deal with drama. I am gonna have a webinar on drama, uh, again, later in May, early in June. If you want, if that's the one that you're interested in, shoot me an email, put it in chat, I'll send you the invite for that one, okay? But we tend to stay away from problems when the reality is this, okay? Take a look at this. The investment that companies make, okay, in parties, celebrations, company picnics, and perks, are usually undermined and zeroed out if team members under their breath know that when they get back to the office on Mondays, the same problems exist and they know the same problems will remain unsolved. And y'all, I have been to many of y'all's parties, y'all have been to some of my parties, and you can just hear it, everybody's glad, they're sitting outside in the parking lot, man, that was a fantastic Christmas party. That was just fantastic, right? And I remember not too long ago, about a year, year and a half ago, we're all walking out, and one of the guys says, yeah, well, see you guys Monday, back to the grinding mill. And everybody, yeah, and you could just sense, of course, they were joking, but there's a lot of truth to what they were saying, because everyone knows, we're, you know, we're just creating energy, okay? but it's not fixing problems. But look at the bottom paragraph. If you fix the problems your team members are gossiping about, you'll see your culture continually thrive. And the operative word there is gossiping. They're probably gossiping about stuff that they've been waiting to be resolved and it's now become drama, okay? But if you, uh, later uh, in another webinar, we, are, we deal with this issue of gossip and what it, in, in summary, it's basically is what people gossip about is problems at the office, okay? The webinar that we're gonna do later today, I believe it's at two o'clock, uh, uh, two o'clock or no, three o'clock, is, is, is how to resolve problems and conflicts at work. We deal with this issue of gossiping, with pettiness and the drama that's surrounding it. But bottom line, if you fix the problems your team members are gossiping about, you will see your culture continually thrive. Fewer employees will leave you and you'll attract great candidates. Now, the question then comes down to who's supposed to do this, okay? This is Marcus Buckingham. Remember the guy from First Break All the Rules? Here's what he says. If you're losing good people, and you can also add the, the phrase here that says, if you're losing good people or your engagement is low, because remember, he's the one that wrote the same book. If you're losing good people or in your, in your morale is low, look to the immediate supervisor. More than any other single reason is the reason people stay and thrive in organizations. And he or she are the reasons why they quit. And they take their knowledge, their contacts, their experience with them. Often, they go straight to the competition. So if you want to engage your team members, then first engage their supervisors. Get them to watch this video. Get them to adopt this mindset. If you try to go directly to people and try to stir the pot, and you try to throw parties or you try to throw excitement and stuff, stuff, they, they're going to look at their supervisor. And if their supervisor is not joining you in all sincerity of what you're trying to do, they're not going to follow you. Why? Because they are really following their immediate supervisor, which is the way it should be. Okay. So then let's dive into how, how do we do this? The best example I've ever heard. Okay. And I heard about this in early 2000s and, and, and it, it just, it was, it was a game changer for me. So that's why I'm showing it to you. Okay. It's this, 
All right, it's a rate. It's a it's a a, a night show, a a a, 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 a a night. Oh gosh, an evening show. It's a, a kind of like a, um, Jay Leno and uh, David Letterman show. Okay, and I don't want to tell you which one it is because I don't have permission to quote for them. But it was one of these uh, late night talk shows where they, when people walked in. They all kind of had to go through a wall, you know, a hall uh, right next by the lounge. And on one side of the wall, they had a wall of jokes, okay? And on the other side of the wall, they had a wall of improvements. And yeah, they would, they would basically just put out a bunch of jokes and things to improve. And every day, they would pull the jokes down and they would vote on the jokes. And if your joke got selected for that week or that, or then you would get some perks, okay? Nice, fun, engaging contest. And it actually helped to produce jokes. I mean, who can, who can come up with their own jokes all the time? So they would send this to the writers and the writers would reward and give incentives for everybody who was contributing to jokes, all right? And, but in the other wall, it was the wall of improvements. What can we fix around here? What are the things that are not working, okay? And they, would, they first started by putting anonymous Okay, and then as they felt comfortable, and I'll tell you, I'll show you how, they then felt more comfortable not being anonymous, but the point is the supervisors would bring those down and they would sort them out on a weekly basis. And they would identify patterns, they would identify what the major things were, and they would take care of the major things and then repeat the process every week, every two weeks, at least once a month. So let me ask you this, what do you think the engagement was there? Okay, it sort of looked like this. Okay, that's pretty much what it looked like for them, all right? And when this, well, I'm going to tell you who it is, all right? It's David Letterman. When David Letterman won his, uh, his, uh, his, his award for uh, Best Late Night Shows, uh, comedy shows, he didn't show up, uh, and he, uh, he thanked his team, and he actually had his team be the ones that, that went to, the, to, to pick up the award. And when they, when they, picked, when they took the award, the, uh, the, the, the office manager said, I'm sorry that David's not here. He didn't want to come because he really felt that we're the ones that make this happen and he shouldn't be the one getting this. So uh, we're here to receive it. And on behalf of the David Letterman show, but David, and they looked at him to the camera and they said, but David, uh, we disagree with you. We're nothing without your leadership. We appreciate you very much. We thank you for, the, for how you've empowered us to do this. You've shown us how to do this. It is a pleasure to work with you. And David, we honor. See, see, see the, the empowerment. All right, the next day on the show itself, he had his award and he said, he congratulated everybody. And he said, well, look, all those of you disobedient people behind the cameras and my office manager and everybody, I am here to disagree with you. It's not me. It's every single one of you. And then he returned the favor, okay? And the culture of engagement that they had there was driven and hopefully to this day still driven by the fact that they are okay with having an open conversation about problems, okay? Because if you don't, you're going to hamper everyone's issues, okay? What people are, are frustrated about, what they're talking in the, in the cafeteria, what they're talking in the lounge, what they're gossiping about, 70% of the things that they're gossiping about are problems that have gone unresolved, that have produced other problems, but now it's become drama. And so it's easy for us as supervisors to say, well, they just have to have a different attitude, but we haven't given them a reason to have a different attitude. So if we help address the problems, then it goes a long way to employee engagement, okay? And then we can do with step number two and step number three, the ones I brought up earlier, how to delegate and how to mentor them to, to performance. So what are the steps that we should take, all right? I could give you 12 steps. I could give you nine steps. I'm going to give you a few steps to get started with, all right? Because right now, all of us, you as well as me, when I started doing this, you got to get used to this. You can't just go out there and say, hey, y'all, watch this video and then expect for everybody to change. No, there's some things you do first you practice that, and then you take other steps. So we're going to take just a small bite at a time, all right? So here's what you do, all right? But what, how you get started is you start with one department, and you, you focus on collecting the top three issues that, uh, that, that are frustrating individuals, okay? So if you have a department of seven people, you're going to want to ask them, and guys, uh, we're going to ask you a, a survey, um, and I want you guys, this is going to go to HR. It's not going to come to me, the manager. It's going to go to HR. It's going to be completely anonymous. And we just want to you tell us, what are the three major problems and issues that we as a clinic, as a hospital, as an engineering firm, what is it that if we fixed, 
what would be the things that would help you realize, man, we're making an enormous amount of progress at this, at, the, at this office, at this company. What are those? Okay. And so you offer them to fill it out in an anonymous survey. Use SurveyMonkey. If you guys want to see the ones that I use, email me. I'll be glad to share those with you. No problem. Uh, there's, the wording of it has got to be correct. Don't make it long, uh, but it, it make it anonymous and make it to where the supervisor lets the team members know this. And even with the HR department manager, have them come and announce it and make it very clear, guys, this is not going to go to your supervisors. So anything you say about your supervisor or anything you feel is you, that, that the supervisor is doing right or wrong, don't worry about it. It's going to be held in tight quarters, in privacy. We will, HR, we will create an executive summary report and show you guys what you guys said, and we know how to handle that. Now, you guys are probably thinking, man, how do you do that? Well, one step at a time. Right now, agree to collect top three, do an anomalous survey, just start with one department. Go to one manager, have them watch this webinar and say, look, you want to try it in your department? Yeah, and the, and the HR manager and the supervisor, go try it with that one department, and I'll show you how to do this. I'll show you the steps because I'm going to invite you to the next webinar and what the next steps are after this. All right. And then how to move it to the next level. You put those on a spreadsheet. I'll give you a copy of my spreadsheet to make it real simple. Okay. And then uh, you send it to me and then I'll show you how to divide different kinds of problems into different categories. There's about three or four categories that all problems normally fall under. And again, this is what we're going to cover in the three o'clock webinar today. So come back if you webinar at four o'clock at three uh, at three o'clock we deal with this issue in a lot of detail all right so get it to me and then i'll invite you to the next webinar and i'll show you how to take the next steps okay so what you want to do is you want to avoid this and this is our this is our our last uh our, our, our last our last um uh, uh slide what you want to do is you want to avoid um whenever i say uh uh, the, the managers try to find ways to fix what things that, that somebody just doesn't go well, try to avoid doing cheesy stuff like this. Okay. Let me show it to you. Okay. Well, you know, leader, how the economy has been really. Hi, I'm a leader and I'm a manager. So manager, what do you have there? Well, you know, leader, how the economy's been really challenging mm -hmm. lately. Yeah. And morale's been so low at work. Absolutely. Well, I invented an instant morale booster for my team. Really? Wow, yeah. that could change business. I know it. I'm very excited. Every one of my employees is going to get one of these free of charge, I might add. I call it the smile o -matic. Want to see how it works? smile o yeah, absolutely. You know, it's exciting. It's very exciting. Okay, the smile o -matic, you just wrap it around your head yeah. like this. Happy hair and voila, voila, instant happy employees. No matter what's going on in the economy, you're going to have happy employees every day, leader. Hey, Bob, sorry to hear about the layoff. Hey, Sally, sorry to hear your budget got cut. Shouldn't our people smile, though, because they actually are happy? Uh, I don't understand. Yeah, I didn't think you did. All right, so the, uh, uh, the, the, the attitude that we should have is this one that I shared with you guys earlier, okay? It's, uh, it's this one on the screen. Good management is the art of making problems so interesting and, pro and solutions so- So Lit Mobile just sent me this solar wireless battery pack. I'm excited, let's see what's inside. I really like the build. It's got- Note to self, I gotta learn how to control my slides. Okay, so great management is the art of making problems so interesting and the solutions so constructive that everyone wants to get to work and deal with them. So don't forget the three, the, the, the steps. Collect the top three issues, do it through an anonymous survey, start with one department, put it on a spreadsheet, send it to me, I'll show you which webinar to go next on how to take the next steps and let me help you out with it. All right, so let me then uh, open it up to any questions that you guys might have. Uh, ask me questions during, in the chat, or if you'd like to raise your hand and have a, have a conversation with me, we still have a few minutes left. You're more than welcome to, um, to, uh, to participate. And if I don't hear any, I want to ask you guys some questions. All right. So here's my first question to you guys. Okay. Is, have you tried, are you, are you, are y'all doing any type of employee morale surveys at least once a year or twice a year? Okay. 
If you are, put yes. If you're putting in your chat, if no, put no in the chat, okay? What I would encourage you guys to do is to definitely consider gauging your, your team morale through using the, uh, uh, you, your, an anonymous survey, and then you use it every six months, okay, uh, to basically gauge, but how you set that up, and you can't just do it flippantly, okay? You gotta have a rhyme or reason, and, and um, what, I, the, the, what, I, what I regularly encourage and ask clients to do is before you dive into doing this, okay? Um, yeah, you gotta realize that a lot of those problems are going to come back at you. You're gonna be told, okay? A lot of people are gonna fill out that survey, okay? Um, and uh, let me read the answer. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great. All right. So you have to realize that a lot of that feedback is going to come back to you. You ask seven questions, okay? Let's say 10 questions. You have 40 employees, okay? You could have 400 lines of data, okay? So first of all, just the mechanics of that. Oh, yeah. You're going to say, yeah, I'll, I'll get Survey Monkey and then I'll give it over to an intern, okay? But therein lies the problem. What that intern does with it and how they categorize the feedback is critically important because it's not, it's like a, an old, not very good politician one time said, it's not who votes that matters, it's who counts the votes. Okay. So it's not so much whether people participated, it's who took the data and did something with it. And oftentimes the data is so overwhelming. How do you break this up into some kind of reasonable? So before you dive into it, okay, let me know. We're, we're, and I'm saying we're going to do webinars because that's really, we're doing about 80% of our coaching and training is now on webinars and videos uh, because of the real moment factor. And honestly, it's working. It really is working. I mean, I, we have clients who are putting their people, whereas they didn't want to come to training before because they had to leave their office. Now everybody's wanting to say, all right, well, you know, show me that video. How much is that video? What if we, we had access to all your library, Maurice? I mean, it really is weird. So let me let me encourage you that to just jump in one of my platforms, whether it's the free videos, or it's the online library, or the uh, or, or the pay as you go. Let me know. But either way, we have we're going to have webinars on on how to take the data and compartmentalize it and make sense of 400, 400 entry points, okay, of, of information. But then, okay, you got the data, okay. So what are you going to do with it? All right. You have to realize that that data needs to go somewhere. And ultimately, that data needs to go to the immediate supervisors and the department managers. So if those managers and those supervisors are not buying into the idea of doing this, then any initiative that you're wanting to, um, uh, that you're wanting to create employee morale, all you're doing is creating a lot of problems for yourself. So here's what I would recommend. If you are thinking about doing this, which you should, okay, then put it on the calendar for six months from now, okay? And between now and then, get with those supervisors, those director managers, and have this conversation about their attitude, their outlook, their uh, demeanor towards problem solving, and realize that the issues that are going to be addressed and identified is going to fall on them, and then we got to work and agree that as a team, we're going to tackle this together. And you want to have that conversation with those supervisors so that when the email goes out and then people start gossiping about this thing, then it's your supervisor that have been in the conversation with you for three, four months prior to it happening. That is, I have found that to be the most powerful way to get it to work because once the problems do come back, you're not catching the, the supervisor by surprise. And when their team members, their frontliners challenge, why are we doing this? It's your frontline supervisors. They say, well, no, I've been involved in this from the beginning. Yeah. And then they can explain why. Okay. Uh, good question. So again, get back with me uh, if you guys are thinking about doing that and I'll, I'll let you know which videos we have. All right. Uh, another question. Do you have a good jumping off survey? Ones that haven't done this? Yes. Yes. I have about seven samples. Okay. Email me Maurice at team real world. I'm going to type this out. Okay. Maurice at team real world.com. Okay. I have paper surveys. I have uh, the I have survey samples on on Survey Monkey. I have those that uh, give ratings, and you can use and anyway, keep it simple. But my answer to you is yes. I do have some good jump off surveys. Um, just remember what I said earlier. Okay, it's better for you to do a survey with your supervisors and your managers 
first and show them what the model is going to look like and what the steps are going to be. Treat it like a program. Treat it like this initiative program, okay? You're not just going to go to everybody. You guys thought about it, and you didn't involve the supervisor. So answer this, yes. Get back with me about the service, and I'll get them over to you. Okay, another question. Um, all right, so our HR manager is very open to tackling issues in our clinic. We have some issues to address. We want to fix stuff around here. Okay, awesome. So, so awesome. So the question is, is um, um, which is great, all right? If you have, if you have, sorry, Claire, I don't think Claire is the, the HR manager, okay? I think it's front, front, front desk. All right, so if Claire is, man, is, is doing that within the department, that's fantastic. Keep this in mind, everybody, okay? That problems that employees face come from three directions. And eh, you could say possibly four, okay? One of them is internal, okay? All right, so number one, from within that department, team members within that department. Number two, from other departments. Okay, three, the above and the below, okay? The executives, the doctors, the engineers, they walk around and they change the rules all the time, okay? And that just stirs everything up. A lot of the problems come from the top and of course, customer problems. So you have to think of it in a cross-directional way, okay? Internally in the core, that's the one area, whether the part that within your silo, then outside of your silo, okay? And then number three is the executives and number four is customers. So it's not bad to ask which, you know, where are the problems coming from? So if you're, if you're asking, if your supervisor is asking your, your, your people for problems, make sure that you're asking not just about your department, but other departments and man, get those managers in the middle to be able to talk to each other and say, say something like this. All right. Hey, look, I'm going to ask my people what they have issues with your department. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. Well then how about I let, I talk to my people and I find out what the issues is with your department. And how about you and I get together and solve those things. And then we go back to each other and then we show them how you and I got together and we fix things around here. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's no faster, better, more effective, long lasting way to keep people engaged when they all realize, wow, Claire and Lori are talking. Okay, and the HR manager is helping with all this. Man, can they get IT involved? Because we got some issues with IT. Okay, and if you can create this locking arms of managers who are fixing problems, everybody's engagement just skyrockets. Okay, um, I promise you 45 minutes. I apologize that we're at 48 minutes. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, any other questions? Any other questions? All right, so let me show you one last thing. Um, and so that you'll see where things are at because we just completely changed and upgraded our entire uh, website. So take a look at this real quickly. When you go to our website, okay, um, you'll notice at the very top that there are, <clears throat> that there's some, uh, there's some links up here at the top. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on, if you guys wanna do consulting, uh, contact me. I'm doing about 70% of a consulting remotely. So, and of course the price has just dropped incredibly because of the nature of the economy. So let me know if you were used to having paid for more ease at the top dollar, well, you're still going to get top quality, but not the top dollar because again, the nature, so the nature of the economy. So give me a holler back on me. And I can discuss that with you, but uh, go to webinars. These webinars, um, these live webinars, just come down here, click on each one of these and look, you have, you have, we, we're announcing them every week. Um, and so most of these right now are free and we're going to maintain a lot of these free and then we'll get you into a series of webinars so you can attend a series of four or five. We are going to start charging. Look, it's going to be extremely inexpensive. Let me give you an idea. Something like $20 a month. Okay. For up to six uh, uh, webinars a month. Okay. You can do an incredible, a lot of, of pro, uh, development for your teams. So come to those. Then the other one is training videos. Okay. Uh, the training videos are live. They are, they're, they're fully, I mean, you don't have to pay a dime for these. Most of these are averaging eight minutes and I hope you guys look through the titles. They're extremely, extremely practical. Not a whole lot of theory, a lot of concepts to get you started, but a lot of bull down, very, uh, very practical. Then soon what we're going to have here is going to have a subscription library. Again, it's going to be somewhere around the $15, $20, $25 a month area for you to access all the, all the, uh, all the material. Then uh, I want to invite you on Friday mornings at 8.15 in the morning. I get on the microphone and I open the lines and we do have a great 45-minute show talking about leadership, management, culture, engagement, everything having to do with management. Join me, ask questions. It's like talk radio. It's very fun. It's kind of disorganized, but it's kind of fun. And then, of course, shoot me an email and let me know how I may be of assistance. Um, guys, 
Um, thank you very much for coming. This is the end of the webinar. Let me know how I can help you. I will send all of you guys an, a link uh, that's going to ask you some feedback on the webinar. Tell me what you think. It'll take you about two minutes to fill out. Tell me if you like it or not. And second of all, I'll also send you another link behind it that shows you the links to all of our upcoming webinars at fee and no fee and all the videos that we have available for you. Make use of our library. We're here for you. I have basically pivoted the whole company and we now have all of our material on our website available to you and what we don't have yet we're making it available why because we all need it and uh, we can't see each other in person so i'm making it very easy available for everybody all right um let me hear from you uh, if you guys have any questions or comments as to how I, I could improve this i'm all ears thank you guys very much for attending and um i'll stay in touch with y'all see y'all later